you, you hear about biodiesel, B20, all this uh, stuff on the news, and farmers, uh, Banff National Airport uses B20, Vancouver Transit, Montreal Transit uses 20% biodiesel, and uh, that stuff's all made out of brand new spanking fresh vegetable oil. So uh, kind of like this stuff, it's kind of dark in here, but just brand new oil, it's canola or rapeseed, whatever, whatever it is, and they process it down, they add some stuff to it and off it goes and nobody really knows um, all the details and whatnot. It's professionally tested, it's engineered, it's approved, it's safe. Uh, uh, if you see a brand new Ford uh, Power Stroke diesel running on, it has a little B20 badge on it, you know, we're environmental, you know, still gets eight miles to the gallon, but <laughs> at any rate, uh, what we've been doing is we've been playing around with, with using the waste vegetable oil. So literally coming to a restaurant like this, uh, we built a, a simple pump system where you suck the stuff out and you make biodiesel with it. And it's actually not all that terribly difficult. It's, it's a little on the messy side. Uh, you have to go in and stuff. But, uh, but we, we played around. We did a bunch of uh, test batches. We got a bunch of little jars going and everything like that. It all looked really good, but it's just a slip into a full production, so so you're using it was 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 a little bit over my head, and a little bit scary to try, just for just for a single person. So I was on Kijiji and I seen a guy selling biodiesel. Oh, I saw biodiesel. I went to a shop, and uh, he's got a nice little bay, probably about the size of this room here, and he has barrels all over the place, and he's got all this waste French fry oil all over, and and he's he's making these monstrous. You know, batches of biodiesel all over the place without even having a diesel vehicle. The trick is with biodiesel is nobody believes in it. Nobody, there, there's no stamp on it if you're making it out of your backyard to say that it's good. And a lot of people are really scared. And if you want to get this stuff tested, it's a thousand dollars, a thousand bucks to bring in a tiny little jar and say, hey, is this stuff good? thousand dollars. So what this fella Nick decided, he's like, you know, I'm going to start making this stuff and I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to test it. He actually does test oil and gas products as a living. You do a well test, they give it to him, he says, yeah, this is good, it's not good, this is all the stuff in it. So he's gonna try and break it down to the point where he can actually test the stuff. So I right away volunteered, I'm like, well, I'll buy it. You know, let's, let's get this on the go, why the hell not? So he's selling me this stuff for 60 cents a liter. 60 cents, so right now diesel is $1.19. So for half price, I've been running it for, I think I'm on my five or six hundredth liter, and I'm absolutely impressed by it, absolutely impressed. I started mixing it kind of 50-50, and just, just to kind of try on an old power stroke diesel truck, and I didn't have any issues. I uh, am slightly mechanically knowledgeable. I'm not a mechanic by any means, but I like to fix my own stuff and whatnot. So I, I, I know to, to check filters and and, and see you know if it's clogging up or if it's doing anything, eating anything. And so far, I see see no evidence of damage, absolutely nothing. And then I got Andrew, you know, to come give it a try. And what he did with his is he actually started the vehicle and he was low on fuel and he started pouring it in there and it cut the noise by almost half. You know, it ceased to be a rattly Jetta diesel. You know, it runs quieter, it runs smoother, he's getting better mileage, pretty much all the, the same good things that I'm having. So, um, like I have to say, I'm, I'm sold on the stuff. It's, it's really, really good if it's processed properly and you're, and you're careful with it, then it's not that bad. So, if, uh, to make this stuff at home, I, I actually got all my supplies at uh, Canadian Tire, and that was about it, eh? Uh, you have to heat this up, and I got a small fish pump. It was about ten dollars. It brings the oil up to temperature. The, the, this Nick fella, he just uses a longer one. Same thing, just a fish tank heater. I, uh, little dollar syringes that that measures uh, that measures the oils and whatnot, because it's it, it always helps to do things small to start with. Okay? We start small, and then we work our way big. Little containers little cheap $2 beakers that I got at, you know, the thrift stores, stuff like that. Um, lots of rags, <laughs> right? Tons and tons of rags. It's, it's messy as all hell. But, uh, but yeah, all in all, 
the way to make this stuff is actually pretty easy. It's really, really easy. It's kind of dark in here. I'm not very good at this uh, scene from the dark. But, Yeah, I got this used oil. Like it's really, really gross and oily and dirty and whatnot. It's kind of, kind of purplish looking. That little bits and stuff. I simply strain it out with uh, just a, a cheap strainer. And I've got all the little bits, bits and chunks out of it. And then the main ingredient in it was uh, methanol. This methanol is uh, yeah, methanol. I, I use it for cleaning out my airlines at work. When my hoses ice up and everything, I pour a little bit of that in there. Gas line, antifreeze, whatever. The methanol accounts for about 20% of the product. So when I make a one liter batch, I start with a liter of oil, and I take 200 milliliters of this methanol, and then I have to decide how like acidic and dirty my oil is. If, it, if I was doing it with brand new oil, I, I found on the internet there's just a baseline where you know, the uh, brand new vegetable oil has this much acid content in it. And if it's uh, a used oil, it's going to have a higher acid content in it. So through a, a titration process, they call it, where you use a, a pH indicator, like a, a, people use a tameric spice, so you can just buy in the store. When you add it in with a little bit of uh, distilled water, it'll just, it'll turn it pink. So I uh, put a little bit in with, a, with an eyedropper, and it turns this kind of little funny pinkish color. I wiggle it around. Oh, okay. I put in, uh, you know, three milligrams of the solution. So I'm going to add that onto my my baseline. Now to achieve that reaction, it's simple uh, lie. It's uh, these little drain cleaning pellets that I got at uh, uh, Home Hardware and Airdrie is one of the only places that sell it. It was about, I think. 20 bucks for a big huge container of it. Hey, that's better. So yeah, just this little stuff, but this stuff will burn you. You have to be really careful with it. Eh? If you get it on your skin, it burns. So, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like that. Eh? So with a, a little of this uh, this lye, you the right way, mixed in with the methanol. I kind of shake it around, mix it up, put my little <clears throat> fish heater in the uh, fish tank heater in the oil. Uh, Andrew got a little one of those little laser pointers to check the temperature. Get it up to the to the right temperature is about 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, dump your solution in, and and uh, I put it in a blender. That's what I use as my, my little test vessel. And uh, yeah, then it's just kind of a sit and uh, and watch it go. And that's actually kind of neat. I got one here somewhere that uh, I just did one last night. You can actually see how it separates. Yeah, so I could kind of see how so this stuff, it has like a big layer of crap on the bottom. Basically, what, what it does when you add the lye and the methanol in is it pulls out all the glycerin and the fatty acids and everything out of the oil and it replaces it with, with the methanol. The, the lye kind of makes it stick inside of there and it stays running. I put this stuff in the fridge and I got it down to minus five and I didn't see any issues with it. I've been running it in my truck lately. I don't have any issues. It starts fine in the morning. So it just goes and goes and goes. Under minus, uh, I think, eight, uh, it, so a lot of people are telling me is that it's a good idea to start mixing it with diesel fuel. So it still cuts your costs way back, but uh, but the mixing, I, I've been having good luck with just splash mixing. I, I put a, I, I buy it in jerry cans, I put a jerry can in, I grab the pump, and then I put this 20 liter, the same amount in, I put a jerry can in, grab the pump, put a little bit more in, and, uh, and I'm going to give it a good whirl this winter. I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice a vehicle if that's what it takes to, to, to learn if this is going to work for me or not. So after the separation with this stuff, I found from, especially through our, my friend Nick there, is that you actually have to wash the stuff. And, uh, well, here, actually, here, I got some cool to show you. Where's the, you should have these from the top, eh? Uh, when, I, when I separated it all out, check this out. This is, stuff is really cool. This is the stuff that comes out of it. This is the, the glycerin, which is the, that comes out of the oil. It's, it, you can make soap out of this stuff, actually. You know, it feels like soap. It, it's basically pure soap. You know, and uh, apparently people pay a lot of money for this stuff. 
Nashville. But it's, uh, but it's wild. This is out of a, a one liter batch. I got this much glycerin out of the oil. And that's about generally how much I've been getting out of it, too. So, is that, that a glycerin from, you know, when you buy glycerin in stores? Is that the same stuff? Is that really I don't know. I've never actually bought glycerin in a store. Why don't you have a look and you, you can tell me. I'll learn something off of you. Does it look anything like this? <laughs> well, I bought a glycerin bars. Yeah. And, uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, it just kind of smells like like oil, right? Like, everyone wants to season the stuff just in the freezer now. That's what comes out of it. And that was actually out of relatively clean oil. That I bought out of uh, stuff like turkey. I like fried a couple of turkeys in the bush with it. And that was it. I kept it. I'm like, oh, I can resupply these loads with stuff. What the hell Here's a rag if you guys just want to wipe your hands off. It's pretty clean, so <laughs> So then, on advice, like, we've been just pouring water right into the stuff after we reacted it, after we put the lye and the methanol in. So we just simply grab some water, kind of pour it on in there, and then the water actually just comes through and it starts separating out. So this is just a single wash. You can see my water is all kind of kind of gross and milky still. And that's that's the whole cleaning process of it. If you just keep gently running some water in, when Nick does it, he's got like a huge bucket and he just pours the water and uh, he has a little drain on the bottom, he cracks the drain, and then when it stops coming out of his water, he just closes the drain. And what he does is he tests the pH. He's got a really fancy pH meter. Uh, just to test the acidity in it. So he'll test the pH of the water before it goes in, and then he'll test it when it comes out. And he'll keep repeating the process with fresh water until the water coming out has no more acids left in it. When that's all finished, it's, it's clean. It's nice and clean, clean, clean as can be. And the only thing that's going to be left in it is a little bit of, uh, of water. And the final, final step is to, is to dry it, which again, you take your heater, you put it in there, crank it up, just get it a little bit warm again to about 40 degrees, and the water just vapors off of it, and then it's ready to go in the tank. And uh, I'll show you one where it's all finished. This is uh, B100. This is just fresh, clean biodiesel. You can smell it, try not to smell it. It's not dangerous, it's not flammable. Yeah, it still smells like cooking oil. It's really clear. It's, uh, it's not dangerous at all. Yeah. And it, like, it, it just burns like a hot down. It totally burns. It's absolutely great. You can hold a bolt torch to it. It won't explode. Um, I, I use it in my garage for, for cleaning. Yeah, you don't need to get stuff with it. Anybody else? Deep mouth, whatever. I use it for cleaning parts. It works awesome. Especially uh, my dirt bike engines. I just had a buddy sucked a bunch of mud up into his engine. We took it all apart. We grabbed, uh, we put some biodiesel into a spray bottle. It just shined it right up. And the best part about it is you just leave it right there. Just leave it, you know. Give it a, a quick oil change. And the stuff is, it, it blends well with anything. When I blended it with, uh, with the diesel, I've been keeping around. This is like, I got a, a B50. And I, I, I cut a couple of these just sitting up just to see what it would do. And after two months, no separation. Absolutely nothing. It was absolutely fine. You know, shake it and I don't see anything. I put, uh, the, the test is just to put a little bit of that methanol stuff in, give it a little shake and see if it, wants, if it goes cloudy. I get no cloud to it, anything like that. It just, if you take care and, and do it right, it's possible to do with very minimal equipment. Uh, basically just buckets, and uh, then that's it, it's finished. And of course that's me. So uh, that's pretty much all I have to have to say about this stuff. It's, it's beautiful, runs good. Um, like how difficult, or how much time would it take to like, make enough biodiesel to fill your tank with? Um, assuming that you're you know, driving a car and your tank is about 60 liters, I would have to say, would it take us? Uh, it, it all depends how big of a, of a vessel you have. So yeah. what we, do, we bought is we bought a, a, a hot water tank. 
So this hot water tank will hold about, say, 60 liters. It's a 60 liter hot water tank. So the first thing is always to do is to do a, a one liter test batch. You always do this with a little one liter te test batch. And I can do a one liter test batch in about, well, I did one last night in about an hour, just to put this together. It took me about, about an hour to do. It's, uh, like I said, it's as, as simple as doing that little titration test. You take a little eyedropper or one of these things will take a, I would pull about a milligram out, put it into my little jar. I, uh, have, I You have to do some pre-stuff, eh? Like I spent a good day, you know, making a titration solution, which is a gram of lye and a liter of distilled water. You know, still relatively easy to do. Once you have all your stuff ready to go, to titrate the oil to find out how acidic is it is, 10 minutes to, uh, to take, as long as you have the oil there, if you've got your, your whole way, you just scoop out. I got a little diesel pump from, a, from an old, one of my old trucks, and I hooked that up to a battery, so I have a little button, you know, that I just push and it just pumps it out. So I fill up my, uh, my little container, right, put it in the blender, I drop the thing into it, I, uh, you know, take a little scale, I put a little bit of the lye on there, okay, I know I need seven grams, I pour that in, I shake it, have a beer or something like that. And the uh, oil's up to temperature, I pour it in, put the cap on, push the blender, sit back, do whatever I gotta do. Ding, my timer goes off, okay, it's been 20 minutes. And then I pour it into a, into a big mason jar, and I put it on the shelf, and then I wait till morning, I wait till the next day. And then the next day, I'll come in and I'll have a good look at it. Okay, it's separated out pretty good. I got a nice thick line. It takes me another five or 10 minutes to pump it out into another vessel um, and put a little bit of water on it. And then I let that sit for however long it takes, you know, where it clears up because it gets a little cloudy when you put it in at first. So again, usually I let, I do all this stuff after work, obviously, right? So in about two, three days, I can decide that, uh, yes, my calculations were correct. I can make a big batch. And then it's really just all how well you can handle the material. If, if you've got a big vessel all set up and it's all ready to go, you could probably fill your tank in three, four days. And then if you were starting to cycle through it, you know, we're saying, okay, well, I'm washing, I might as well be cooking another batch. Or, well, I'm drying, I might as well be washing. And, and in the end, if, uh, like this Nick fella, he, he, he can easily supply me, he says, with uh, 300 liters a month. Andrew with about 100 liters a month. So his operation, you know, working relatively steadily and learning it. You know, it, it takes your time to learn. You gotta learn, 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 and try, try, try. But I'd say once a guy's got it all town pats, then uh, with with working for, you know, a couple hours a night, you know, tops, absolutely tops, and that's count. Uh, you know, you're cleaning, you're cleaning up after yourself, or going for adding in a collection run here and there, whatever you're doing. Yeah, with, a, with about an hour a night, uh, and if you've got a buddy, so two man hours a night, two guys working on it, you can easily, 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 easily stockpile enough. And I think that'd be the big benefit. Like our kit that we got, we've got a big 1,000 liter storage tank, and it's our goal to maybe take a little bit of time off. Maybe, you know what, I'm gonna take two or three days, and I'm just gonna hammer down and, you know, make a whole whack of this stuff. Right, and you can legally store a thousand liters of it. We checked with the old GC there, and they're like thousand liters, no problem. If it's up after a thousand liters, they want you to start paying tax on it. So, uh, as far as that methanol, that methanol can get kind of expensive. This Nick guy can sell it to me at about sixty cents because he is a well tester, and uh, and so he's a registered lab, so he can get this material tax free, all this stuff. But the only way we found out a way to buy methanol is. Uh, from like a race gas distributor, or uh, who else would do it? If you know some guys in the oil field that do fracking or whatever, they can hook you up with it. But but the way we costed it out was almost 90 cents a liter for just a regular guy just to go pick this stuff up. Eh? And uh, you need power. You need some sort of a way to heat it. So you have to kind of take that into account. Uh, the biggest problem I have is that I don't have 220 in my garage, so I can't use the big hot water tank. So you do need 220 to do it efficiently. But uh, but it's, it's doable, it's possible. Um, I just wanna make a comment on how clean your biodiesel is compared to our petrochemical uh, diesel. Um, me and my wife just purchased a smart car, it's an 06. The last time smart car diesels 
that, that are shipped to North America stopped in 08, and it was a result of uh, um, Transportation Canada thinking of, uh, of doing a recall on this valve that gets clogged because our diesel is so dirty. So in Europe, they're having no problems with their biodiesel, but ours has a high content of sulfur to the point where this valve needs to be replaced after, say, about 100,000 clicks, if not less. Well, that's, so that's a major problem. I'm really impressed right? with that compared to like, what you can make, and they make this crap. <laughs> well, These massive petrochemical companies. Well, yeah, they, our diesel out here sucks ass. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Um, if, you, if you import a vehicle from Japan or something like that, they, they don't stand a chance here. They totally don't stand a chance. That, that's why diesels have a bad reputation. Our diesel sucks. And a lot of these newer engines, just to meet the government requirements to be clean enough, they, they can't run the fuel. They totally can't run it. Like, uh, like I like the old Ford diesels. They work good for me, you know? I, I think all these American cars are all the same crap. Honestly, I don't think Ford's better than Dodge or Chevy's better than whatever, but, uh, but they eventually just had to give it up and say, look, we have no clue how to make a diesel engine. And they contracted them all out. Uh, the Chevy Duramax, that's an Isuzu motor. They, they just quit. They're like, we can't make a diesel motor to pass these tests. So Azuzu built theirs, and that's probably one of the better efficient ones. But the, the Ford Power Stroke, they shipped it out to Europe, and they got it engineered in, in Austria. And uh, the old Cummings Dodge diesel, I think that one's still locally manufactured. But, uh, but the, the Duramax and the Ford, they just can't run the fuel out here. They just got tons and tons of problem. And, and in the end, if you are going to buy a diesel, it's best off to do your homework and figure out what the problems are with it and and just do the simple corrections it's it's not worth buying a new one i bought a brand new diesel a few years back and it blew up on me at fifty thousand kilometers you know and it took a month to fix and i still had to make my payments on the truck and after doing my research now well that was largely because of our crappy fuel you know warranties don't mean shit. they totally don't you know they're not worth the piece of paper that they're written on you know it just doesn't matter, They're, diesels cannot run, and this stuff, absolutely beautiful. No issues, I, I keep an eye on things. Uh, it is known to eat away at some hoses, especially older hoses, if it's been having crap diesel running through it, you know, it'll, it'll hurt it, it's already damaged, the damage is done. And in this case, rubber hoses, the, the oil will take a little bit of a toll on it, but only in certain spots. And I got on a couple of forums, and they said, the truck that I have, if you run biodiesel in it, this one hose gets affected. Change that hose. It's ten dollars. You know, go get a steel braided hose and put it in there. Oh, okay, you know, I'll go do that, right? I haven't because I haven't had any problems with it. I'm just kind of waiting to see it go, you know. But I know I can just go to the parts store and get it. What is the reason? Good. What is the reason for our biodiesel being so dirty? It's not our biodiesel that's it's dirty. It's our diesel that's dirty. Sorry, our diesel. Sorry. Yeah. Is, it, is it just simply a refining process? Uh, as far as I know, I, I would imagine that's all it is. So that's 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 a good question. You know, I'm really not too sure. Um, I've heard that a European diesel is comparable to our jet fuel. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, in, in cleanliness and purity and whatnot, okay? Eh? So, but yeah, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm in construction. Um, lumber? Where do you get the worst lumber? Canada, right? Like, I, I'm sorry for anybody that's bought a new house in the last couple of years, but I built a lot of new houses and I got to really dig to find a nice straight board. And in the end, you just get so frustrated. You're like, you know, this lumber sucks, right? It's full of knots, it's crooked, it's twisted, it's dried too fast. All the, all the good stuff leaves Canada. You know, we get, we get stuck with the craft, you know, and that's, that's kind of the, the sad truth about it. And it works the same way with fuel, lumber, food. You know, it's, it's sad, but it's, it's true. And a lot of people, well, what can you do about it, eh? I guess it's just all the big companies just kind what of doing what we can do about it. Well, well, what we can do is we can at least, you know, this, this is something that's, uh, that's really not easy just for the, the home guy to do. I've seen kits that they say they're one man operational and everything, but they're about five, six thousand dollars, upwards ten thousand uh, dollars. The cost is still relatively high up there. Uh, a, a few years ago, nobody was doing this. It just wasn't worth it, you know, because you can buy diesel fuel for 80 cents a liter. You can't make it for that cheap. You can't make biodiesel anywhere near that cheap. But now that it's on the uprise, and the other thing about European diesel too, uh, European di and gas for that matter, uh, is probably six to eight dollars a liter. A lot of people don't know that either. They pay through the nose for their fuel out there, and that's why they have a bunch of little small cars. That's why they run diesels. 
So it's it's hugely expensive. You know, we we pay yeah. nothing for fuel here, right? right? Totally nothing for fuel. But that's all going to change. I really think that that's going to change, and I want to know. I want to know how to do that. I want to have a little bit of a stockpile, and that's why why I want to do it. I don't really have a lot of faith, so you know if. You know, I don't, I don't know, I'm in construction. I don't know what I'm, I'm gonna be working tomorrow. I got hit hard on that 2008 crash. So I was in the middle of projects that they just pulled the plug on, you know, sorry, you're not getting paid, pack up your crew, bye. So, and uh, yeah, this is this is the key, you know, and it, and it works, it absolutely works, it absolutely works. Sorry? Oh no, I was just waving. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much, all I really know about it. So, all I know is that I'm getting, getting good.